All right, and welcome back to my basketball podcast. This is the podcast where we talk about everything NBA and college basketball. Mostly college basketball right now, just because I like it a lot more, just because the season matters a little bit more more than the NBA, but I will get into the NBA for a little bit. Now, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about, we're going to start with college basketball, first of all. And in college basketball, we're going to be talking about everything that happened from Monday, November 27th to December 4th. I think that should be the next Monday. So we have a whole week full of slated games that we have to get to. So we'll start on Monday, November 27th, where there were a couple good games, nothing too exciting. But teams like Northwestern, Rutgers, and Wisconsin all picked up easy wins. Washington State and Rutgers, or Washington State and TCU also picked up wins. But the biggest game I thought of the night was definitely this Oakland versus Xavier game. I thought it was an interesting game just because Xavier was a team I liked coming into the season. I thought they were decent. You know, they they played some good opponents like Washington and St. Mary's and were able to hold in there and hold their own and almost get the win against Washington and then come back and blow out St. Mary's. So I was looking at them as a really decent team, but they ended up losing to this Oakland team, 78-76. to This was a really close game throughout. Oakland had the lead for most of the game. Um, Xavier did have the lead in parts of the game, but Oakland was in control for most of this game. And at the end, Oakland had a four-point lead, and Xavier just could not catch up in the last 10 seconds. And Oakland got the win here, and this is a really good win for this Oakland team, a really bad loss for the Xavier team as they're coming off. As Xavier is coming off some good, decent wins these past couple weeks, but they fell short against Oakland, and they take on a pretty, pretty good Houston team next week. Ranked number six in the nation, I think. They definitely could be in the top two or three Houston could, but we'll get to them later. But a bad loss for the Xavier team. And the next game I want to focus on was the, definitely the St. Mary's versus Utah game. It was an interesting one to say the least late at night. Not a lot of people are watching this one for sure, but St. Mary's has not gotten to where I thought they would be this season. They have felt short, completely short of expectations. And this Utah team has looked pretty decent so far. They held their own against Houston and only lost by a couple points, 10 points. But, I mean, this game was close, and Utah had the lead for some of the game against a really, really good Houston team, like I mentioned earlier. They did lose to St. John's, but they were able to beat Wake Forest, Utah was, and now they've came back and beat St. Mary's. This game was pretty close, tied tied at half, but Utah was able to come back in the second half and win this one by seven points, the final score being 78-71. to But... Like I said, the St. Mary's team has really um, not lived up to the expectations that they should have, especially being a team that doesn't get a lot of chances in their conference play except Gonzaga. This team has lost, St. Mary's has lost four last, the last four out of their five games and just have looked pretty bad these past couple past couple weeks, losing to Weber State, San Diego State, Xavier, and now Utah. They don't, this team definitely doesn't get a lot of chances out of conference, and the ones they've had, they haven't taken the opportunities they should have. They're probably going to fall short, and we'll have to see what they do in conference play, and if it's possible that you know they can get in, a chance to get in the tournament without having to win their conference, but we'll see. Not a great start for this St. Mary's team, but like I said, this Utah team has really kind of impressed me so far. Next, we move on to Tuesday, and there were some decent games on Tuesday, and before I forgot to mention that This week was the ACC-SEC Challenge, so you had a lot of good games this week. Um, So we'll start in the ACC-SEC Challenge, where the first game to happen was the Syracuse versus LSU game. Not a great game in this one. Syracuse blew this LSU team out, and I haven't seen a lot from this LSU team. I think they're um, not very good this season. I do like the Syracuse team, though. I think they're pretty decent this season. Uh, You know, the two losses are nothing to shame about, Tennessee and Gonzaga. They beat everyone else on their schedule, even though they haven't really played anyone too great. But still, they were able to blow out a pretty decent LSU team. Not a great one, but still an SEC team. Blowing them out is pretty decent. Next game was this, uh, not a very good one to say the least. There was this Notre Dame versus the South Carolina game. Now, Notre Dame is a team that is at the complete bottom of the, in the ACC. South Carolina is somehow 6-0, and but has not played anyone good so far. Their best win is maybe might be this Notre Dame game or DePaul, which both teams... Actually, they did play Virginia Tech earlier in the season, so that was a good win for them. But still, haven't played anyone too great. They'll get tested when they play Clemson coming up. That should be a good game if, you know, South Carolina is able to stay undefeated till then. But 
South Carolina was able to get this win 65 to 53. A pretty close game, but Notre Dame just couldn't hold on at the end and fell short of this win. So South Carolina got the win there. The next game in this SEC ACC challenge was this game versus Missouri and Pitt. Pitt is a team that's kind of impressed me so far in the ACC. They've looked pretty solid at times. They were able to beat Oregon State, but lost to Florida. Now they ended up losing to Missouri, 71 to 64. Missouri ended up winning this game. Missouri improves to six and two. Missouri has not impressed me at all. Um, they lost to Memphis early in the season and lost to I think a one and five Jackson State team. So. They weren't impressing me, but this Houston win does bring me hope for this Missouri team. They have been playing a little bit more better since that Jackson State loss, but still, they'll have to improve a little bit more. Next, and probably the game of the night, was definitely this Miami versus Kentucky game. Miami, a team that I was really, really high on, not even coming into the season, but even after, you know, this past week, how they played in that tournament with where they beat Kansas State pretty handedly and then took on Providence or not Providence, excuse me. They took on Georgia and Kansas State and beat them both pretty handily. They took on this Kentucky team, and they they definitely fell short in this game. They were not able to get to the rim as much as they'd like to, not able to get the offensive boards, and Kentucky beat them handily, the final score being 95-73. to 73. So a 20-point loss for this Missouri team, and I think most of that came in the second half, to be honest. This game was a game going into halftime. It was only a five-point deficit for this Miami team, but Kentucky picked it up in the second half and we were able to blow out this Miami team. Kentucky is a team that's really impressed me, and I've said it before that you know they they stuck hard against a really good Kansas team, and they have looked really good. Even though they lost versus Kansas, they have a really you know young team, so I'm sure they'll be able to develop even more. But this Kentucky team has really impressed me, and for this Miami team, I still think they're really decent. I just think they fell a lot really short this game. But still, a really good win for this Kentucky team. And this should get them on the eyes of the committee. Both Baylor and Kansas were able to, and Purdue were all able to pick up really easy wins against, you know, what I like to call cupcake games because those are really easy games. So did Gonzaga. But next, we move on to the ACC, another game of the ACC SEC Challenge. And it was this Old Miss versus NC State game. And Old Miss has really, really impressed me. They're six and zero so far and beat NC State handedly, seventy two to fifty two. And it was this Old Miss versus NC State matchup, and Old Miss has really impressed me earlier in early in the season. They have they're six and zero so far and handedly beat a pretty decent NC State team. Final scoring up being seventy two to fifty two with Old Miss winning this one. They don't have you know the quality wins, but still they're six and zero undefeated, and they'll take on Memphis later in the week, which. We'll get to the result of that game later, but Old Miss a solid win there. Next, we move on to another game with Clemson versus Alabama. Alabama ranked 23rd going into this game, and Clemson, a team that has impressed me a bunch, to be honest with you. They beat a good UAB team, a good Davidson team. They also beat Boise State, who I think is a really solid Mountain West school, and Alabama now, and they didn't, they didn't you know, make it that close against Alabama. This game wasn't a game, you know, down the stretch. Clemson had the lead for most of this game, and they were just able to hold on and be able to play good defense against a pretty decent Alabama team, even though Alabama is coming off some rough games. Still, Clemson was able to beat them up and, you know, take the win 85-77, to so a good win for this Clemson team. Next, move on to Wednesday's games, and there were some pretty decent win games on Wednesday including continuing the SEC-ACC challenge. But outside of that, the biggest game I want to mention was definitely the St. Joseph's versus Villanova game. Now, St. Joseph's has been playing really, really good these past couple weeks. They played Kentucky just about a week ago and sent it to overtime against Kentucky. They ended up losing in overtime, but still, going to, Kent going to Kentucky, playing them really good, and sending it to overtime is a huge accomplishment especially for a team like St. Joseph's, who isn't really known in the national stage. So anyways, they took on Villanova on Wednesday, 18th ranked Villanova, and Villanova was the team that was playing really, really good recently. They had just been some really good teams in North Carolina, Memphis, and some other good teams, and St. Joseph's, Joseph's blew them out of the park. The final score ended up being 78-65. to Now, it wasn't a complete blowout, but still, 
St. Joseph's had control in the, of this game the entire way. They were up by eight points at halftime and just continued to extend this lead to take a 13-point win against a pretty good Villanova team. St. Joseph's really underrated right now. And for Villanova, they've been playing decent, but this was a bit of a bad loss here. I know St. Joseph's has been playing really well, but still a bad loss for this Villanova team. Hopefully they can get back to the seat. Next, we move on to the ACC SEC Challenge, where the first game to happen was this Florida versus Wake Forest game. A pretty pretty decent game. Wake Forest was able to get the win here, 82 to 71. So a good win for this Wake Forest team. Next, Texas A&M versus Virginia. Virginia was able to get the win here actually, and improved to six and one on the season, while Texas A&M falls to six and two. A really interesting game here, just because I thought Texas A&M was you know, one of the top teams in the country, but they've had some pretty interesting losses recently, one against Florida Atlantic and now against Virginia, which Virginia is a decent team, but still, I thought the Aggies were going to get this win here, but unfortunately, they fell just a little bit short, losing by 12 points in this one, the final score being 59 to 47. And the next game is a really interesting one, actually, was Tennessee versus North Carolina. North Carolina coming off that loss against Villanova, and Tennessee hasn't been Played okay in the Maui. I mean, there's no shame in losing to Purdue and Kansas, but still, you know, if they could get one of those wins, they would have played a lot better. But still, they played good in Maui, and they took on North Carolina in this one, and man, did they struggle, especially in the first half. I mean, this game was not a game in the first half. North Carolina put up 60 points in the first half, and the offense for this Tar Heels team looked fantastic. R.J. Davis had 27 points for the Tar Heels in this game and just played on fire. Tennessee was able to mount a small comeback and make this a little bit of a game at the end of the second half, but still, North Carolina was easily able to get the win here, 100-92. to So if you like offense, this was a game for you. A good win for this North Carolina team, and hopefully they can bounce off and improve on this. Next, we just have some smaller games. Colorado State beat Colorado. Colorado State looked really impressive this season, starting 7-0 and are ranked number 20th in the country. They have some good wins now against Colorado, Creighton as well, earlier in the season, and Boston College. So some good wins for this Colorado State team. And as we're, as we're on the topic of Boston College, Boston College picked up a pretty decent win against Vanderbilt on Wednesday night. Boston College ended up winning 80-62 to in this one, so a good win for this Boston College team. They've looked okayly decent so far this season. Not great, but still better than, you know, what they usually do. So a good win for this Boston College team. Next, Florida State versus Georgia. Not a very interesting game, but a close one. Georgia ended up winning by two points, 68 to 66. So a good win for this Georgia team. They ended up getting a last second buzzer beater by Justin Hill to seal the deal and win it for the Bulldogs here. So a good win for Georgia. Next, we have Virginia Tech versus Auburn. This game is really never close. Auburn picked up the win, 74 to 57. A good, solid win for this Auburn team against a pretty decent Virginia Tech team, so congrats to Auburn. And the game of the night was probably this Duke versus Arkansas game. And man, if you have seen Arkansas's arena, it is crazy packed. Against Duke, it was packed to the max, and the atmosphere was insane. And Arkansas picked up the win in a pretty close match, 80-75, to 50, 80 to 75, excuse me. And like I said, the atmosphere was crazy. Fans stormed the court after the game, and it was just a great game overall. And this was a great statement win for this Arkansas team. I mean, they've had some rocky games recently, losing to NC Greensboro, North Carolina, Memphis, and having to take Stanford to double overtime. So they've had some they've had a rocky start to the season, but you know, hopefully they can pick it up and they start on day one against Duke. And that was a tough matchup for this Razorbacks team and they were able to get it done. A pretty close game throughout, but Arkansas was in control of this game most of the game and able to pick up the win. So, good for this Arkansas team. Next, we move to Thursday night's games, and there were some pretty decent ones. It was a pretty chalky night overall, but still, some good games happened. The first game that I like to call is kind of like under the radar. Two teams that, you know, aren't in Power 5 conferences or haven't been known as much, except Florida Atlantic, as we know, pretty well since they're in the top 25. But still, Florida Atlantic and Liberty played against each other. And it was actually a pretty close game, except, you know, once they got to the second half, Florida Atlantic kind of blew out Liberty. So a good win for this Florida Atlantic team. They ended up winning 83 to 58 against a really, really solid Liberty team. It was actually undefeated going into this game. So congrats to Florida Atlantic for winning a tough game. 
Next, we move to Texas Tech versus Butler. A pretty decent game. Butler's impressed me a little bit this season, and they continue to impress after they got the overtime win against Texas Tech. 103 to 95, excuse me. So a good win for this Butler team. They improved to 6-2. and two. Next, Creighton comes back and wins after losing to Colorado State. They end up playing Oklahoma State and winning pretty decently. Creighton picks up the win, 79-65. Creighton improves to six and one. Well, Oklahoma State has not been playing well this season. They dropped to three and four. Hopefully, they can come back. Texas blows out Texas State, and you know, in an expected score matchup, I guess. Texas ended up winning seventy-seven to fifty-eight. So, good win for this Longhorns team. Next, Utah versus Hawaii, and like I've said a bunch, I think Utah's a really solid team. I think they're undervalued, and they showed that again against an undefeated Hawaii team. They ended up beating this undefeated Hawaii team seventy-nine to sixty-six. So. Again, another solid win for this Utah team. And that's basically it for all of Thursday night's games. Let's move over to Friday night's games where you have a lot more games, a lot more actually some conference games to get into. So we'll get into all of that. First, I want to start off with another under-the-radar game, I guess. It was Liberty versus Charleston. Liberty played back-to-back -back games. And Charleston ended up beating this Liberty team 76-67. Good win for Charleston. They were in the tournament last year. And you know, they're 4-3 and three right now, but they have some good quality wins, and they ended up winning 76-67, to 67, so they ended up winning pretty decently in this game, and for Liberty, they dropped to 6-2, and two, so two straight losses for this Liberty team, but again, some really solid competition. Next, you have number 6 ranked Houston versus Xavier, and this game is actually really close, a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. Xavier hang in there, hanged in there for a while. They were in there till about 2 or 3 minutes left in the second half, but eventually Houston was able to pull away. Houston kind of felt like one step ahead of Xavier the entire game, but Xavier was always in there, and Houston got the win 66-60. to as Houston stays undefeated now, and Xavier drops to 4-4. Four four. Next to St. John's versus West Virginia. St. John's ended up winning this game 79-73. to Good quality win for the St. John's team out of the Big East. And West Virginia, they also, like Oklahoma State in the Big 12, haven't been playing very well. They have some bad losses this season against Monmouth and SMU, so hopefully they can get back on track, but a good win for the St. John's team. Next, you have Maryland versus Indiana. Maryland, a team that has been dropping a lot of easy games recently, and Indiana team that's been, I think, undervalued this season. They improved to 6-1, and one, Indiana does, with a win over Maryland, 65-53. to 53. A Big Ten Conference matchup to start out December, and Indiana got the job done. They'll take on Michigan next week, and they improved to 6-1. and one. Georgia took care of business against Mercer. Nothing special there. And then LSU also took care of business in the SEC against SC Louisiana. Another easy win for LSU. They improved to 5-3. and three. Iowa State was able to get the win against a really, really bad DePaul team. That's 1-6 and six right now, so nothing really special in this game. DePaul actually had the lead to start the game, but Iowa State gave them no chance in the second half. And Iowa State ended up winning by 19 points. 99-80 was the final score in this one. Next, BYU versus Fresno. BYU undefeated right now ranked number 19th in the country, and they showed that against this Fresno State team. BYU ended up winning by, I think, 30 points. 85-56 to 56 was the final score in that one. Then to finish out Friday's slate, we had two really, really good games. One really expected, UConn versus Kansas. Fans were camping out in Allen Fieldhouse, Kansas' arena, for, I think, since Wednesday, and this game was being played on Friday, so it was a really hyped-up matchup. Game was pretty close. Hunter Dickinson, Hunter Dickinson. And KJ Adams both played fantastic for this Kansas team. So did KJ McCuller. Kansas was able to, you know, always be one step ahead of this UConn team. And Kansas ended up getting the win 69 to 65. But still, UConn played pretty well against, especially in this kind of environment. Tristan Newton had 31 points in this game and just looked phenomenal for this UConn team at point guard. And UConn, definitely a solid team. This is their first big test and they hanged in there with a really good Kansas team. So, okay. But still, they lost, so congrats to this Kansas team. They picked up the win against a really good UConn team. Next, to finish off Friday's slate, we had a really, really good Big Ten battle between Purdue and Northwestern. This was a fantastic game. Purdue ranked number one in the country, and Northwestern at 6-1 and one so far. And these two teams fought out, and Northwestern wasn't able to limit Zach Eadie's performance. He still had 35 points in this game, but what they were able to limit was Purdue shooting, which helped them keep this game close throughout. Northwestern actually had the lead with two or three minutes left, and Purdue had to hit a game-winning or a taunt game time buzzer beater to send this game into overtime. The game was tied at overtime at 76-all, and 
Northwestern was able to come ahead in overtime and win this game against the number one team in the country in Purdue. The final score being 92-88, to so a fantastic win for this Northwestern team. And every year it seems like Purdue always loses a big early Big Ten battle, and this was probably the game for them this year. The Big Ten is a pretty deep conference, especially when you get into conference play. That I think Purdue is going to drop a couple games this season. Boo Booey for this Northwestern team had a fantastic day, and this Northwestern team looks good. This Purdue team I don't have too many questions about, but still I do have some questions about their offense. You know, can they still win without having Zach Eady be their main guy? I don't know. Still a really good win for this Northwestern team and a good performance for this Purdue team. Just weren't able to get this one. Next, we move on to Saturday, and Saturday was complete chaos. Tons and tons and tons of upsets. We'll get to them all. We're first going to start out with the Syracuse versus Virginia game. Virginia took care of business here against not a very great Syracuse team. Virginia ended up winning 84-62. to Solid win for this Virginia team that their only loss is to Wisconsin. Speaking of Wisconsin, they picked up the win against Marquette, the number three ranked team in the country. They were playing in the Kohl Center, which is such a hard environment to play in. And they got the job done. They ended up winning 75-64. to This Wisconsin team had the lead for almost the entire game. In the middle of the second half, they you know, were stumbling a little bit and weren't able to score. But they picked it up at the end. And Chucky Hepburn was able to do it for the Badgers. And they got the win against the number three team in the country in Marquette, who was playing really solid and even played pretty decent in this game, but just weren't able to keep up with this Badgers team. Next, Miami played Notre Dame, and Miami got the easy win. 62-49, to wasn't as close as the score entails. They ended up winning by 13 points here and improved to 6-1. and Next, we have Penn State versus Bucknell. This is a game I didn't think I would be highlighting, but Bucknell actually upsets Penn State. Penn State started 4-0 and have now lost four straight, including this Bucknell game. They ended up losing 76-67, to and this Penn State team has to get on track, especially once they get into Big Ten play. Next, Old Miss stays undefeated as they beat Memphis on Saturday, the final score being 80-77. to Old Miss was favored by one and a half points, and they ended up getting the win by three points. Didn't even need that one and a half points there. So a good win for this Old Miss team against a pretty good Memphis team. North Carolina takes care of business against a pretty decent Florida State team. They end up winning 78-70. to And two absolutely shocking upsets here. Villanova falls to Drexel. This is Villanova's third bad loss. They lost to Penn, St. Joseph's, and now Drexel all this year. They've won their good games. They've just lost their easy games, and they got to get back on track now. Six and three, and they've won all their hard games. And Duke ends up losing to Georgia Tech in a really close game. Duke ends up losing 68-72 to with Georgia Tech winning this one. A great win for this Georgia Tech team, but even a worse loss for Duke. I know Duke was playing away and was playing in Georgia Tech's arena, but still, they got to get the job done here against not a great Georgia Tech team. Next was Oregon versus Michigan, two teams that haven't started the season, I don't think, as they'd like, but Oregon got the win here, 86-83 to against Michigan. Michigan started the season really strong, but they've been stumbling recently. And for Oregon, they've also been stumbling as well, so these are two teams that need to get back on track, but close game, Oregon got it done by three points. Next, Illinois takes care of business against Rutgers, number 24th ranked Illinois, wins by about 20 points, 76 to 58 was your final score, and Illinois improves to 6-1, and one. not really an interesting game there. NC State gets the overtime win against Boston College, they end up winning 84-78 to 78 in overtime, that was pretty much expected, I mean, these two teams, are. I don't expect much from them in the ACC, so at least a good win for this NC State team. Next, in a shocking upset, Kentucky loses to NC Wilmington. That is just crazy. I mean, this NC Wilmington team hasn't been anything too special this season. Kentucky, a team that I was really high on, especially as they played hard against Kansas and had the lead for most of the game. And I would say blew out Tennessee earlier in the week. But this was just a shocking upset. I mean, NC Wilmington was in control of this game almost the entire game and ended up winning by seven points in this one. 80-73 80 to 73, 73 was your final score. I mean, Kentucky was favored in this game by 19 points, but somehow they weren't able to get things done here. So hopefully they can get back on track and get some more wins, especially in that SEC. It's such a tough, tough conference. Next, TCU takes care of business against Georgetown. They end up winning by one point, which I was expecting TCU, especially since they're undefeated, to 
win by a couple more points, but at least they got the job done. They ended up winning by one point, 84 to 83 against Georgetown, who I would say has improved since last season. I mean, last season they were just horrific, but this season they're playing a little bit better, five and three right now, so they have a decent record. Colorado State stays undefeated after they beat Washington 86 to 81. Colorado State 8 0 so far, ranked 20th in the nation, and they had a little bit of a scare from this Washington team, but were able to get away as this Washington team has actually really impressed me so far. I thought they played really well, you know, playing some really tough teams and have been able to compete with them. I mean, they went to overtime against San Diego State, beat Xavier, have played some really tough teams. I mean, they take on Gonzaga later in the season, so that'll be a couple tough games for this Washington team. But still, they fought hard against a pretty, really, really good Colorado State team, I would say. Next in your final game that I want to mention that happened on Saturday was this Gonzaga versus USC game. Gonzaga actually played really well in this one, I thought. Ryan Nemhard scored 15 points. So did Dusty Stormer, their freshman. So some good overall ball movement. Boogie Ellis, obviously, he played really good. And Isaiah Collier, USC's two star players. They both played good, scoring 28 for Boogie Ellis and Isaiah Collier scoring 14. Just wasn't able to get the job done against Gonzaga as they took an early lead and never gave it back, and Gonzaga ended up winning 89-76 to in this one. Next, we move on to Sunday's games, and Sunday's games were a lot, lot lighter than these Saturday's games. Saturday was filled with explosive games and upsets, but Sunday's games were a little more chilled down as the first game that happened was Auburn versus Appalachian State. A bit of an upset here, actually a pretty big upset, I thought. Appalachian State ended up winning this game 69-64 to against an Auburn team that I was really high on, especially after they played Baylor and almost beat them, and that was their only loss coming into this game. But they drop another one against Appalachian State. Final score being 69-64. to Appalachian State, a team out of the Sun Belt that I also like, but I like this Auburn team more, and Auburn just wasn't able to get the win here. Clemson take, took on Pittsburgh, and Clemson, who's undefeated right now, not ranked, but I think they should be, ended up winning this game 79-70. to Nothing really special. Pitt was, you know, in this game for a little bit, but once Clemson put their foot down, they ended up, uh, losing the lead, and Clemson took took the win by nine points there. Next, you got Wichita State versus Missouri on Sunday. Missouri, a team that I haven't been, you know, liking very much, especially after that loss to Jackson State, but Missouri got the win here against a pretty decent Wichita State team. 82-72 to was your final score. Virginia Tech took the win against Louisville, who Louisville is coming off a really bad year and starting off pretty bad. They started out a little better than they started last year. I mean, Almost beating Texas and almost beating Indiana were some decent quality performances out there. And I think it was New York where they had their in season tournament. But Virginia Tech took the win here 75 to 68. Expected. I mean, they were favored by 14 points and they ended up winning by 13. So a good win for this Virginia Tech team. And next, in shocking fashion, I thought this Mississippi State team, who's ranked number 21 in the country, ended up losing to Southern, who Southern is two, was one in six going into this game. And Mississippi State was favored by 26 and a half points. But Mississippi State couldn't get the job done here. They end up falling to six and two. As they lost this week earlier against Georgia Tech, they lose again to Southern. This is two straight losses in one week for this Mississippi State team, who was six and zero going into this week. But unfortunately, they couldn't get the job done against a not a very great Southern team. We'll have to see what they do coming up. Next, you got Creighton versus Nebraska. This Nebraska team was undefeated coming into this game, but Creighton just overpowered them, and Creighton ended up winning 89-60. to Creighton still ranked 15th in the country. We'll see if that ranking goes up as the rankings come out, uh, I think, this Monday. So those were all the games to happen. Um, that was it for college basketball. I would mention the NBA, but there's a lot more coming up in the next week that I'm going to mention that in the NBA, especially that in-season tournament that we're going to talk about. Quarterfinals are coming. I'm just going to give you a little bit of a rundown on who's playing. So on Tuesday for the in-season, or Monday for the in-season tournament, you have the Celtics versus Pacers and Pelicans versus Kings. Two pretty solid matchups there. Then on Tuesday, you have the Knicks versus Bucks and Suns versus Lakers. Two also pretty good matchups there, especially that suns Lakers matchup. That's going to be a good one to watch in that Knicks-Bucks one. So I think Tuesday's matchups are a little more good than uh, Monday's ones. But Still, this in-season tournament is going to be exciting, especially when you get down to the Final Four and things go down to Las Vegas. But I appreciate you listening to this episode. Thank you for listening so much.